Hey everybody, Nick Russo here. In this video, I'll share my comprehensive plan to help you pass the Cisco Certified DevNet Professional Core Exam. Now, for those who know, the DevNet Professional Certification is a multi-test certification, so you have to do a core exam and then at least one concentration test. This plan is only focused on the core exam, and if I end up doing any of the concentrations in the future, I'll be sure to come up with a plan for those later. If you're not familiar with the certification or you want to learn a little bit about it, you can click on this link here and it'll take you to the main Cisco page. Some of you have seen my other video on the DevNet Associate Study Plan, which is about the same amount of time, say 10 weeks. The difference with this plan is that there's a little bit of preparatory work. There's two general options to consume this plan. I call the first option a quick start option. This is an option for people who already have their DevNet Associate certification or have comparable skills. So if you've been doing uh, network automation or software development for the past several years and you feel comfortable with those technologies, then I would consider that to be comparable skills. However, maybe you're brand new to all this and you want to keep the end goal in mind of getting your DevNet professional and you don't have those core skills to begin with. In that case, you can go to my square one plan and start there. Now, in terms of resources, and I talked about this in my other video, is that it's very heavily based on using Pluralsight. The reason I like Pluralsight is that it's very low cost. They have an enormous library of at least 5,000 courses, and the quality of those videos is excellent. There's not a lot of fumbling around. They're very uh, to the point. They also have a strong focus on software technologies, which makes it a good focus for learning these topics. The other big building block here is the DevNet resources. In this plan, I tend to link a lot of learning labs, I abbreviate that as LL, and those are really helpful to get hands on some of these technologies using the free resources available from Cisco DevNet. I also have a variety of other free content. Usually these are YouTube videos to give you different perspectives or other ways of looking at a common set of problems in addition to the DevNet and Pluralsight stuff. The reason I chose these resources is due to cost. So the total cost to pass this exam based on this plan is going to go somewhere between $100 and $130 depending on how long it takes you. That's about the cost of one or two textbooks, so overall you get a good value for your money. I also believe in diversity of opinions, and you can see my content is less than a quarter of the total content in this plan. You'll get a lot of opinions from other people who see things a little different than I do and have a lot of smart things to say. If you have suggestions for improvement or questions about the plan, please head over to my website and go to my contact page and reach out to me that way. On the topic of this copyright, I'll be brief. I want you to take this plan and I want you to make adjustments for your personal use. So if you think you need more time on certain topics or you want to mark off topics that are done, that's great. What I want to prevent is people coming in here, doing a find replace and replacing all of my particular content with some other stuff and effectively taking all the work I did and turning it into your own. So I'd ask that you please not do that. Let's take a look at the quick start plan to get started. Even if you have the prerequisite skills and you've been doing this for a while, I recommend you take two weeks before starting the formal plan. This allows you to plug any knowledge gaps and also address some of the specific topics that are included in the courses. The first week introduces some important software techniques. For example, if you haven't worked with the Flask package in Python, it's good to have some basic skills with it because it's included in my scenario. I also include basic technical skills on things like Bash, Git, and Python programming, which are skills you'll definitely need to implement this plan. The first week finishes up with some application-related skills around HTTP, REST APIs, and using Docker containers. The second week of this quick start plan is actually the same as the last week from the DevNet Associate plan. I recommend that you spend some time reading my free Cisco Evolving Technologies book, which should take you about four hours, and it covers a lot of the topics on the blueprint. Then, I think it's worth your time to watch all my existing associate level courses just to plug any knowledge gaps. You can speed them up if you already know the content, but watching this will give you some context around what I expect you to know before continuing with the plan. Let's assume that you're new to this whole thing and you need to start at square one. I have a plan for that as well. So this isn't so much of a plan, but more of a pointer. If you're new to all this stuff, I really recommend you go and you check out my DevNet Associate content. I've already built a 10-week study plan for this, and I know there are several hundred people currently working through it, and I've been helping some of them in their studies. 
I have a YouTube video that explains how that plan works, which is just like this video in case you haven't seen it. This prep work will take you about 10 weeks, but you do need to have these skills before continuing. At this point, hopefully you're able to choose which preparatory option you want to do, and then once you finish that training, whether it's 2 weeks or 10, we can move on to the actual DevCore plan. In the first week of this 10-week plan, we focus on application design and evaluation. By evaluation, I mean assessing things like scalability, maintainability, observability, and a bunch of other itties that tell us how an application has been designed. This also includes architectural patterns like monolithic, service-oriented, and microservices. Even though these concepts are kind of theoretical, there are some demos involved to help you understand how the pieces fit. The second week is a little more concrete because we introduce some real app improvements. We spend a lot of time talking about databases, all the different kinds of databases, when you should use one type of database over another, and things like that. We also add MySQL support to an existing application we wrote in a previous course, so you see how it can actually be applied in real life. We move on to talk about SSL certificates and end-to-end -end encryption, which are important for any application today. Again, we add that support to our app, so you can see how it's done and learn how to implement it. I also talk about the 12-factor app, which is a set of tenets or rules that help govern what a good piece of code looks like. We finish up with some continuous integration and continuous deployment, CICD, which includes some static code analysis too. Now security is more than just encryption, as many of you know. In the next week, we talk about things like OAuth 2, and specifically the authorization code grant flow, which is a very common but also a little bit complicated process. We also learn about cross-site request forgery in detail, or CSRF, and we actually add CSRF protection support to our existing Flask app. We finish up the week by learning about Kubernetes, and specifically using it to do continuous deployment of our Flask app. This is kind of the grand finale at the end of the first course, where we're able to take an app, enhance it, and then deploy it in the cloud using Kubernetes. Week 4 starts the second course, and this course is very focused on specific Cisco products. Now for some of you who are less interested in Cisco stuff and more interested in technology, I still think this course is worth your time. A lot of the APIs are very different, so it gives you a lot of exposure into continuously working with different products and seeing how their APIs work, being exposed to different authentication methods, different ways of interacting with the APIs, etc. Some of the products that we cover here are Meraki, DNA Center, UCS Manager, and Intersight. This week is also heavy on DevNet Learning Labs, so you'll get plenty of hands-on on these different APIs if you've never worked with these products before. In week 5, we taper off our focus on Cisco products. This week focuses on Firepower Threat Defense, or FTD, which has a new local management API known as Firesight Device Management, or FDM. This is a pretty cool way to be able to manage independent FTD instances without the centralized Firesight Management Console, and it's an API that's really well documented and easy to use. More interesting than that is using WebEx Teams and building an interactive chatbot. That means that we can talk to the bot and we can ask it to interact with our Flask app on our behalf. This is a really cool way for non-technical people to interact with your app without having to click through a UI or anything like that. By the end of this week, we're about midway through the plan. I recommend that you peel off at least four hours to work on this challenge. After I show you how to set up chat ops, I recommend that you try to do it yourself on a small app that you can write. It's very important to get hands-on so these technologies stick. Week 6 is kind of a cleanup week where we cover some miscellaneous topics. There's three main areas here. First, we cover HTTP content caching using different cache control headers and different techniques to improve our HTTP performance. I also introduce application hosting on Cisco Catalyst switches, which we can do in the DevNet sandbox. We basically take our existing Flask app, we dockerize it, and then we upload it to the switch, and we run it locally. We finish up with a brief discussion on an application performance monitoring tool named Cisco App Dynamics, which is pretty cool, but we don't dig too much into it. In week 7, we begin the third course. This is probably interesting for a lot of the network engineers out there, so for those who have a lot of experience with Cisco, but not with software, I think you'll enjoy this a lot. We begin by refreshing core building blocks like RESTConf and YANG, which we learned in previous courses, but it's worth reviewing again. Then we write a few different scripts to do things like collecting, adding, and deleting static routes on an iOS XE router hosted in DevNet's sandbox. 
I also recommend you check out my Automating Networks Using Python course at Pluralsight because this will give you some additional context around how networks can be automated. Even though Cisco is focusing a lot on model-driven programmability with things like NetConf and RESTConf paired with Yang, there are other approaches. For those who work in networks with legacy devices, which is pretty much everybody, it's important to be aware of some of these alternative techniques. Last, I introduce using RESTConf with Ansible to manage devices. Specifically, we'll be adding loopbacks and doing interface management through Ansible rather than custom Python scripts. If you want to learn more about using Ansible for network automation, I have a course on that too, which is very popular. Much like the Python course, it'll teach you how to do network automation using a variety of approaches based on your specific business needs. In week 8, we tackle two relatively big topics. The first tool is Puppet. This is an infrastructure-as-code solution, much like Ansible, except it's a little bit different. Personally, I think it's heavier weight and has a steeper learning curve, but it's still powerful and good to know. This plan teaches you the Puppet fundamentals and also provides some context around how Puppet is used for networks. I also include a few intermediate Git topics here, which can be useful in these infrastructure-as-code deployments. I know that may seem out of place, but trust me, it makes sense in this context, and if you see the course, you'll understand. We move on to model-driven telemetry, or MDT. This is a fancy way of saying we want to collect data from our devices, which is structured based off a Yang model, and then display or process the data in some way. We're going to accomplish that using NetConf for dial-in telemetry to an iOS XE router, and we're going to take that data and send it to an ELK stack. The ELK stack is from the Elastic company. It's Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Basically, we're going to stand up this ELK stack container, have a Python script that subscribes to some telemetry topics, and as the script collects it, we'll ship it off to the container for processing. Once we have the data, we can do things like create dashboards with it, and for those who work in operations, this is highly relevant to the work that you do every day. We finish up this week by talking about some of the softer skills with automation. Specifically, how do you identify which configuration management tool to use based on business drivers and technical constraints? I've developed a few short stories and scenarios that help detail these points. Once we get into week 9, the videos stop, and it becomes self-study. For those of you who have earned Cisco certifications before, you know that professional level certifications require a very strong understanding. You can't get by just by reading books and doing a few labs. You need to have a lot of hands-on, and I want to give you the opportunity to address some of the challenges I outline in my courses. Throughout my courses, I'll offer challenges, like for example, hey, we just learned how to add static routes, now can you write a script that deletes them, and things like that. I'm aggregating all those challenges here to give you a whole week to work through them. If you can knock out all these challenges, plus the chat ops one that we did in the middle of the plan, then you're doing great and you're probably ready for the test. Week 10 is where we want to get into exam mode. We want to laser focus on the most relevant content. So some of the contextual stuff that we did to learn, we're going to kind of push that aside for now. To stay as focused as possible, I recommend watching some of the network programmability videos that you may have already watched that are on DevNet. I'm identifying a few key modules here that are highly relevant for this exam. I also strongly suggest you rewatch all the courses that I've built for this specific topic. By watching it all at once, you'll see how the whole story fits together and it will also help address any knowledge gaps. If you have any weak areas, watching these courses again will surface those and give you time to make the corrections and remediate before you go and spend all the money taking the test. There are going to be many more resources that I haven't listed in this plan. As new resources come out, I'm going to add them to the plan and potentially remove old resources. I want this plan to be a living document and something that's useful for years to come. If you have ideas or suggestions, please let me know. Again, go to my website, and I'm happy to have a conversation about what belongs here and what doesn't. On another note, this sheet is going to be updated pretty regularly. If you're watching this video in March and you want to start studying in June, don't download the plan until June. Or at least, if you do download it in March, just make sure you check for updates because I'm always trying to improve it. I have a link to where you can download this plan in the description below, so feel free to check that out. That's all I have for you all today. Again, thanks for your time. Please let me know if you have questions and best of luck in your studies.